I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up next, we've got what should be a good one between the Chicago Bears and the New Orleans Saints. With that, let's get over to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome with the call from New Orleans. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. From a city that's played host to 10 Super Bowls, here's a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. This is what it looked like just a moment ago in the heart of New Orleans. Folks, there's no place for this noise to go in the Superdome. It is loud, and these fans are ready for football as their Saints get ready to do battle with the Chicago Bears. Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis with you from our broadcast perch. And Charles, as we get this thing started, what are you going to be keeping your eye on? Special teams. Field position is always a big determiner in a ball game. Who sets their offense up for success the best? That team will win the game. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken at his four. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. There's Drew Brees as he comes out onto the field, the 40-year-old quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. He'll turn 41 in January, by the way. He already is the NFL's all-time passing yards leader. He could be the all-time NFL passing touchdowns leader at the end of this season, but he's got some competition. It's been Peyton Manning's record since 2015, but right now it's Breeze and Tom Brady dueling to see who will have the top mark as we exit the 2019 season. Fun to watch down the stretch. Ready? 95-56, 95-56. Get the ball. <laughs> Breeze now on first down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. It'll go as a loss of three right away, and it's second down. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. So after the sack, they'll come up on a still manageable second and 13. To throw, it's Breeze. And this is a catch by Ted Ginn. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. They just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. A first carry now. This is Alvin Kamara. And I don't think Kamara got there. Looks like they stopped him short. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. Tariq Cohen is deep for the Bears. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Mitchell Trubisky and the Chicago Bears offense coming up here. A lot of ups and downs for the Bears' third-year signal caller, Trubisky Charles. There was a time where the morning shows both in Chicago and nationwide were saying maybe it's going to be time to move on from Mitchell Trubisky, but kind of right in the ship a bit with a few good games in the second half. Well, he was healthy for one thing. You remember earlier in the year against Minnesota, he hurt his shoulder and had to leave the ball game. And then later in the season when they were playing, I believe, on a Sunday night against the Rams out in Los Angeles, he hurt his hip late in the game. 
got himself healthy and they got back to where they could run the football with Mitchell Trubisky. And he's at his best when quarterback run game scrambles are a part of what he's doing. He throws the ball better. He gets better. He gets in better sync with his offense. I like Mitchell Trubisky a lot. He cares about the game. And one quote has stuck with me. I had him before week 15 against Green Bay. And he told me and my crew, my head coach, Matt Nagy, no one's had my back like he has. I think that those two will stay together in lockstep moving forward in 2020. Second and nine now from the 21. You get Rodney, you get him. A play fake to Montgomery. Now Trubisky rolling to his right. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Following the penalty, Montgomery, even with the good footwork, he'll be stopped just inside the 35. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The 25-yard line is what they need here. This is third down. From the gun, it's Trubisky. And Robinson with a big catch. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 19. They're piecing together a nice drive to start this one. Seems pretty scripted and pretty successful so far. And I think they did it without our help. 
because you remember when we sat in with in the production meeting with them to talk about this and hey you know how are you guys gonna come out of the gate I know I offered my help with a few plays, and they didn't I, seem to want it. I didn't offer it. mine. You, know, you, were, you were the smart one. Whatever they're doing, though, it's working really well. From the red zone now, here's Trubisky on first down. And his throw is incomplete. Uh, you got a young quarterback, you know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that, because when the game starts to move fast, and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target, but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. On second down, it's Cohen. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. And that's a run that will energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Now from the nine, here's second and goal. Now it's Trubisky. Pressure comes, and Trubisky goes down. Cameron Jordan wreaking havoc with a sack. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it, and ended up on the ground. The crowd here in the dome making things difficult. Third and goal. Off the play fake. Here's Trubisky. Oh, he almost picked it. Nearly a turnover there on their opening drive. That's a throw he'd like to have back. Now fourth down. Well, so a drive that spans all that time, and yet you may only come away with three points here. Well, your defense, all right, they actually like these long drives. They get to rest over on the sidelines for a while, but when you're not finishing with points in terms of touchdowns, that's frustrating. They've got to figure out how to close out these long drives and get sixes instead of threes. Now for the field goal try, here's Eddie Pinheiro. This a 33-yard attempt. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And it's 3-0. The Bears hit the scoreboard first. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. Yeah, but bottom line, they wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken at the three. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. CD, let's take a step back and look ahead to the Saints in the playoffs here as they get ready for this next drive. Another double-digit win season for them. What do you think of their prospects come playoff time? I think they're excellent because Drew Brees is back in form. I got to see him late in the season at home against San Francisco, and he's magnificent in that game. Brought them back from down late in the game. Gave them a chance to win. Put them ahead with less than a minute on the clock. So it wasn't his fault they didn't win that game. He looks like the Drew Brees we expect. 
but the big reason is their defense. Their defense is as good as there is in the league, rushing the pass or defending against the run, covering everything downfield. Bottom line, though, they are built to win at home in the playoffs. Since Sean Payton's been the head coach, they're 7-4 and four at home in the playoffs. A lot of people would say, well, it should be 8-3 and three because of what happened against the Rams last year, but still 7-4. and four. But on the road, just 1-7, and seven, and that's excluding the Super Bowl, which was a neutral site game. And don't forget, good job by Teddy Bridgewater bridging the gap when Breeze was out, 5-0. and oh. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Now Breeze. And this is incomplete. The target that time, Michael Thomas. Third down here. And here are the Chicago defensive starters. Haha, -ha, Clinton Dix attracted a lot of attention when he was about to enter the NFL for his ability to play the football in the air. He's actually shown that he can tackle pretty well in the league, too. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. From the gun, it's Breeze. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. And it's Ha Ha Clinton Dix with a pick. And he is not quite going to make it all the way in. They'll mark him down right about the one-yard line. A great pick. Nice return, but you know he's just beating himself up inside for not getting all the way in. No doubt about it, because he had visions of end zone in his mind. Going to be the total hero. But we did see there the emphasis on it's not just good enough to pick it off anymore. Bring it back, get the yardage, and really help out your offense. As the Bears come back out here, we talked about their quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky, earlier and their head coach, Matt Nagy. But bottom line, it's not going to be a second consecutive postseason appearance for this team. They just took a little bit too long to get rolling. They were a better team in the second half, but by then both the Packers and the Vikings were well clear of them. That is so true. And look, all the issues they had on offense, Mitchell Trubisky struggling with injuries and inconsistency early. Then on the defensive side, I think it was underrated, the loss of Danny Trevathan at inside linebacker. He went out fairly early. Akeem Hicks gets hurt in London against Oakland with an elbow injury. He doesn't make it back until week 15 against Green Bay. Without Akeem Hicks in the middle, that really hurt Khalil Mack and Leonard Floyd coming off the edge because teams can now devote extra attention out to those guys since they didn't have to worry about the pass rush as much up the middle. Back at the two now. Here's second and goal. Trubisky will throw. Got his man, and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown. A two-yard touchdown grab as the Bears push further out in front. And a play fake down near the goal line here worked out well. Anytime you can make them think that you're going to run the ball and go to that play-action pass, you see the end result, usually a touchdown. Is that harder? Is the play fake harder to defend for the defense near the goal line or no? Because there's not as much room to work with. It is harder because down near the goal line, you're thinking much more of a running play, especially if people run out big formations. So it is harder to defend. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead grows to 10-0. They had the short field, and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is taken at the three. 
And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. And he'll look to rebound from the early interception that led to six points the other way. And when he threw the interception and he had to come to the sideline, I guarantee his first thought wasn't about the interception itself, but what could result. And I know he was thinking to himself, come on, defense, bail me out. Well, they weren't able to in this situation. Now he's got to go out and atone for it himself, but he can't force things. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They start the drive on the ground, Kamara. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. That's what they needed. It's an eight-yard gain, and now third and four suddenly doesn't look so bad. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. From the gun on third down, Breeze. The open man is Smith. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. His first catch, good for eight at a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Running with Kamara. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Tough running there. That's a hard earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now Breeze looking middle and it's incomplete. Jared Cook, the tight end, was the target. And it's third down. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. There's Breeze. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Akeem Hicks at 6'5", 332, finds his way home for the sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on to punt for New Orleans. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down to close to the goal line at the one-yard line. You rarely call your punter a weapon, but he certainly was there. How about that? Pinning him down at the one-yard line and helping out the defense in a big way. I'm telling you what, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I might be thinking safety right now. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They scored a touchdown the last time they had the football, but things going to be a little bit more difficult this time. Oh, certainly, because where they're starting, the goal isn't even thinking about a touchdown at this point. They're thinking about field position. A couple of first downs in order to give some room for their punter and maybe flip the field position for their defense. 
Now Trubisky back into his end zone toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. On second down, Montgomery. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. All right, let's go ahead and detail this situation here. Third and long coming up, back near your own goal line. I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. Maybe just run, run up the middle. Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. You got to try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. Here's Trubisky. It's complete to Robinson. And able to get a little more breathing room out to the five-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. So they don't run it. You said they should be very hesitant to throw it. They completed it, but not enough to pick up the first. But any space you gain there is good space for your punter. So, yes, I said they should run the football. They threw it, got a little bit of distance. Things should be a little bit better now. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. They'll look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. A good starting spot for the Saints as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. Shotgun now for Breeze. And this one complete to Smith. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. It'll be a Saints first down on a pickup of 13. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target 10 nothing to score after one on ea sports and 10 here's breeze and it's hauled in by jared cook and he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39 well they're unable to convert that into much but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause second and five after the five yard completion on first down throwing now is breeze That'll be complete to Cook. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. 14 yards is the pickup. First down, New Orleans. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Bree's going to throw. Gain has it complete. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. On the ground, this is Kamara. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. 
certainly looked like it indeed here come the flags defense well we looked at each other right away we knew that flag was coming out and i always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you i don't want to throw the flag but you caused the play you did it i had to So now 95, then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. Come on, QB, come on. Right. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Ted Gann there to make the grab as they are now on the board here in the first half. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Will Lutz on for the point after. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. Just a four-play drive that time. And it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. To Montgomery to begin the drive. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Now Trubisky going to give this to Montgomery. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now a run with Montgomery, and this winds up a gain of four to the 41. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. From the 41, Trubisky. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. The offense on third down tonight, just one for three thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. Now Trubisky. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Cameron Jordan picks up his second sack of the afternoon. So they dial up the blitz on third and inches. It pays off. 
And frankly, they were probably dialing up a run blitz, expecting him to run it in that situation. But instead, they end up back at the quarterback and put him on the ground. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he's on to punt for Chicago. And a great job on special teams to doubt it, as this will be marked down inside the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line absolutely ideal from that position you're hoping to get it down inside the 15 inside the five superb the 15 yard line it'll be a Saints first down on a pickup of 13 I guess it's good we can't really read the mind of the defensive coordinator now huh and him pinned back there deep give up that run can't be happy yeah whatever was whatever is in his mind right now we probably couldn't say over the air So a little breathing room now. First and 10 at the 17. Now Kamara. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. Back-to-back -back back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll run out of the gun with Kamara. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Now Breeze on the bootleg. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Khalil Mack came in there hard on the blitz and got him down nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Third and long now after the sack of Breeze, and the Saints up against it here. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. He's got a first down and then some at midfield. He gets it across the 50 and down to the 48. It'll be a Saints first down on a gain of 16 yards. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and then connected there and picked up a first down. Ready. So into Ready. bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 48-yard line. From the gun, it's a run for Kamara. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to oh, yeah. stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big.
Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. A 10th carry for Kamara. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt, and this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot, and this score will stay right where it is. Well, I was watching him in warm-ups, and he hit a 62-yarder that hit the crossbar and went over this one a little bit inside of that, but not enough leg. And the difference is what? Well, your live conditions, live right? Live conditions, game conditions are a whole lot different than practice, where you just pop it up there, no rush, no pressure. I think maybe that takes a couple yards away from you when you have to do it when it's real. Two sides to every coin. This is the bad side of missing the 58-yarder. Now they start at the 48. They'll start things on first with Torrey Cohen. And he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. They'll run on second down with Cohen. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 14 yards in a Chicago first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So from the 36 now, first and 10. It's just me and you. It's just me and you. On the ground, it's Montgomery. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Now they'll throw it with Trubisky. And he completes it to Cohen. Give him two yards on that play, and that'll make it third down. It's a gain of two yards, and it's third down. The Bears on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and six. From the shotgun is Trubisky. And he's got Miller. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 23. Two minutes remaining in the first half. 10-7, our score.
reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Well, once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Trubisky to throw again. Open man, Taylor Gabriel. And down inside the 15 he goes. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 13-yard line. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first go, half, go, and that's the go, first target, not go. just the first catch, first target. From the red zone now, here's Trubisky on first down. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all, because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range, and that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Draw play here. Trubisky gives to Cohen. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And for the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. Draw play, Cohen, and he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, this from 34. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone, get you six? the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Here now, a look at Drew Brees in our player spotlight. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it struggles. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When the, when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground. But that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. Breeze now on first down. And this will be incomplete physical play on the football there and it's second down with that incompletion you know Charles one of the big storylines in the final few weeks of the season lies in the AFC South Tennessee and Houston battling back and forth Houston won round one week 15 a victory in Nashville but which of those two teams do you think has the potential to go deeper in the playoffs 
Well, Tennessee just lost at home to Houston, and now we'll have to go on the road to play them again in Week 17. So I would say, on the surface, you would think Houston. They have the quarterback as well, Deshaun Watson, that scares everyone. But I'm picking Tennessee as the team that could go deeper because of their defense. That's really a top five defense on any given Sunday. Their ability to rush the passer, their ability to play the ball in the air. I like that Tennessee team. I think Ryan Tannehill, the switch to him at quarterback, has really energized that club. And they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. And that is incomplete. They went with the dime look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on to punt for New Orleans. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. On the return is Cohen. Give him 11 yards that time on the return, and the Bears take over. And this offense led by Mitchell Trubisky going to make their way back out there. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Final 24 seconds of the first half as they come up here first and 10. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. From the gun, it's Trubisky. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now it's Trubisky. Stepping up, he'll try and run. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 41-yard line. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half on as the field goal unit to see about getting three points. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. Get ready, get ready. So we get have ready. reached halftime in what's a six-point game at the break as we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has been a hard-hitting affair to this point, and you got to expect we'll see more of the same in the second half. And to bring the action your way, let's get it right back out to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Set to resume, here we go with the second half. The Bears holding the lead and ready to receive the kick. This is fielded at the goal line. 
And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt, <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. They go over the middle, and it's complete to start the drive. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. That throw good for four. It's second down. Second and six, just inside the 30. On the draw, this is Cohen. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Trubisky now to throw on third down. Sliding out of the pocket. He may try and run for this. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Now that definitely hurts because the mindset is getting a three and out there, and they don't get it done. They give up the scramble and a pickup for a first down. Trubisky now, 9 of 15, throwing the ball, 60%, and it's first and 10. Out of the gun, Trubisky. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Well, let's get back to the playoff picture. We talked about the AFC. Let's look at the NFC. That race starting to come into focus. We know most of the teams, Seahawks, 49ers, Saints, and Packers all in. Vikings in good shape. How do you handicap this race? It seems like anyone can beat anyone. I think you're spot on because if you were going into the playoffs with these teams that we're going to talk about, who would you make the absolute favorite? It could be anyone, right? It could be Seattle. It could be San Francisco. It could be New Orleans. I know Minnesota's probably going to come in as a wild card. Green Bay will come in as a division champ, it looks like. But bottom line is... Dallas or Philadelphia has got to win the NFC East. And I don't know that anyone wants to go to their home field and play when they have to play in a divisional game. So when it comes, to, when you get it all together, and maybe that would be a wild card, I would guess, because they'd be the fourth team in. But when you put it all together, it is absolutely wide open about who wins the NFC and represents for the Lombardi Trophy. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he's on to punt for Chicago. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many time. plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. A nice-looking play to start the drive down the middle and complete. And out across midfield, down to the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, 
bad things usually happen. It takes a strong arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Breeze now, 10 of 17, Go. throwing the ball. He's Go. got a first and 10. Camara. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. That sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Continues to be a struggle for this offense and this home crowd. They're growing a little restless here in the second half. And I think they've just got to look at how they're trying to move the football. Yeah, you want to run it, but maybe you spread it out, maybe some swing passes that can take the place of runs and give you a little more space. Set. Yellow lady, yellow lady. Again, it's Kamara. He'll get about four here, down to the 43-yard line. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments and doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. From the gun, it's Breeze. This is caught by Gann. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee. And that means fourth down. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And Lutz's kick is good. And that will cut the lead back down to three at 13 to 10. These kickers now used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Field goal, Lutz to kick it away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Bears offense now heading back out onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. On second down now, it's Cohen. He takes us from the 30 to the 34. But if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Throwing here, Trubisky. And Robinson with a big catch. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. A Chicago first down, the former Jag, Allen Robinson, on the catch from Trubisky. Third and four is always a tough call. Maybe a little too long to run for it, 
but not too long to hit him on the quick slant. And that was well executed. Found the window and zipped it right in there. On first down, Trubisky. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. That throw good for four. It's second down. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Here's Trubisky to throw. And an alley to run. He'll try and run it. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. Trubisky now five straight completions here in this second half first and ten now it's Trubisky got a man open it's Wims and now a fumble the ball's out and this is picked up by the Saints and his guys are going to take over at their own 48 yard line we have seen this before and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time catch the ball you know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. How does the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here? And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three the points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. Following the fumble recovery, it's Trubisky out to his left. And now he's going to use his legs. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Looked to me like they adopted what my kindergarten teacher always said. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally, able to hold him in check. He'd been carving him up, running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was when he decided to take off and go. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. Eight yards that time, able to take off, and the result is a first down. Someone knew exactly where he needed to get to pick up that first down now. I'm not so sure about the technique in getting there, but he went for it, and he got it. Exactly. He knew where he needed to get, because remember, if he slides, when that derriere dips, if you will, that plays over. The derriere dips, I like that one. Yeah, been working on it for a little bit. Trubisky now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. First down, a run with Cohen. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front really well done the previous run good for nine here's second and a yard on 
the carry. It's Montgomery. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Nice job there finding room to maneuver, and he worked his way into another first down. And look, they had great field position to start, but boy, they've done a nice job taking advantage of it. Now they're just hoping to cap it off. On first and ten, it's Trubisky. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. A hat tip to P.J. Williams there defensively, making sure that one didn't find its target. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. To throw on second and ten. Trubisky, and that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Trubisky will throw. Rolling to his left. He can run for it, and he will. And he's going to come up well shy of the first here as the tackle's made right around the 12. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. He certainly had plenty of success running the ball, and right now I'm getting the sense that he's looking to take off and run every time he steps back to throw it. But they did a nice job there collapsing on him and holding him to a short gain. Now for the field goal try, here's Eddie Pinheiro. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And that extends their advantage to six. It's 16 to 10. So three field goals that he's hit. Now this last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick. Right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This fielded at the two. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. They'll try to get the offense going with Kamara. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. They run it again with Kamara. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Two yards, good enough for a first. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Ready. Yellow waiting, yellow waiting. Here we go again. On first down, Breeze. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. So it's a quarter that saw these two teams trade field goals here as we've reached the end of three quarters of play. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Ready. 
Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. From midfield, here's Breeze. That'll be complete to Cook. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. The Saints on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. Here it's third and two. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. It'll be called a gain of two, and that'll leave them with some options here on fourth and inches. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Ready? Possession Run is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. Here we go with Kamara. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. Just enough push up front. He only needed about six inches. He didn't get a whole lot more than that. No, but he made sure he got enough so they didn't have to worry about measuring it or making it even close. Ends up picking up a couple of yards in a situation, as you noted, where he only needed inches. To throw, it's Breeze. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. Leonard Floyd, the old Georgia Bulldog, fighting his way into the backfield. And they went empty backfield, and because of that, nobody was there to pick up the blitz. And you know that offenses, when they go to the empty backfield, they have different things designed on every play to try to account for things. But what people often forget, Defense is audible as well. And a lot of times when they see an empty backfield, they audible right into a blitzing situation. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Now Breeze. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Now Breeze. And the throw there going to be incomplete. A fourth and very long coming up. You're out of field goal range. I don't know that you can go for this. Well, I know that you want to, right? You know that they want to say, hey, let's go for this. We've got the perfect play drawn up. Let's do it. But I wouldn't go for it either. I agree with you totally. You only down one score. Punt it. Let your defense pick you up. And this one sails out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25. It will. 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They begin the drive on the ground with Cohen. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Back to the ground, this time Montgomery. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? 
or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. From the gun on third down, it's Trubisky. And that will be incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch. Hands first and ten. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And they had a long drive going last time, but it stalled out. But still, maybe something positive to carry forward from that last drive. Well, a few different things that you carry forward. Number one, as you noted, they were moving it pretty well, so that gives them a lot of confidence. The second part is keep your defense off the field. Mm -hmm. gives them a chance to rest up a little bit. And last but not least, uh -oh. you've taken a good look at what you've done on offense, noted where the weaknesses are, and you know when you want to come back to them. Like when you're organized with your points. Well Point done. A, B, and C. On first and ten, here's Breeze. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Akeem Hicks able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Breeze now. And this is Cook with the ground. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. 22 yards there, a first down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Breeze now, perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven, it's first and ten. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Going with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. Here's Breeze to throw. Jim has it complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain there of 21 yards. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. Looking here for Smith downfield. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Breeze again here on second and 10. 
And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player? Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Now Breeze on third down. Hit from behind, and he's going to be driven down. Khalil Mack picks up his second sack of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Here's Thomas Morstead now. He's been terrific so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer create space for our runners and let's go ahead and get these guys low man wins let's go do it on this drive <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at the 20 a give to Montgomery out of the gun and they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28 and I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Two yards, good enough for a first. Not too many more ideal situations in second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. So first and 10 now from the 30. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It's a loss of a yard there and it's second down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. A play fake to Montgomery. Now Trubisky. Going to let one fly. For, and that's caught inside the 35. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A big pickup of 38. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. Montgomery. And he swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. 
One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Gets this to his running back, Tariq Cohen. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 17-yard line. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. This has been a good march down the field, but now they're stuck looking at a second and 14. Trubisky gives to Cohen. It'll be a minimum pickup, and it will take us to the two-minute warning. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. Now Trubisky going to give this to Montgomery. And he'll only get this to the 14 as he'll come up well short of the first down. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And that will make this a nine-point lead. A big one there. That gives him a little cushion and makes it a two-score game. Yeah, bled a little time off the clock, put some points on the board. It's not totally out of reach yet, but it has to feel pretty good to them right now because as a defender... You go out on the field and say, guess what? You can put some points on the board, but that won't beat us. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. The offense and Alvin Kamara heading back onto the field. And we have seen a decline in the numbers. Where does the fault lie? Just him, maybe the guys up front combination? Well, as you and I both know, it's almost always a collective deal. But in this case, I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident. They had blocked so well in the first half, picked up on what the defense was doing. I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on, and now they're being a little bit overwhelmed. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Short play like that in this situation, this late, that's a win for the defense. No doubt. I remember something Coach Madden used to talk about all the time. Sometimes you can't just take what the defense gives you. You have to take what you need. And in this case, the offense is taking what the defense is giving them, not what they need. Now Breeze finding Kamara. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Right here, right here. 
Now Breeze. He's going to let it fly. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Looking to erase a two-score deficit here in the fourth quarter. Going for some big plays. Yeah, they certainly were. They just added one shot, didn't they? Forget trying to move the ball downfield in small little increments. Let's go for the big one. But how about the defense playing situational football, looking at the scoreboard and realizing what could hurt us most? The deep shot. They played it well. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll go for it. It's Breeze. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Bears are going to get the football back, and they're going to get it in great field position. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Now, there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it, strictly for pride. So from the 36 now, first and 10. The win for the Bears just around the corner. They go down to a knee. Now the Saints will use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with a minute six left to go in the game. The win for the Bears just around the corner. They go down to a knee. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. And Trubisky down to a knee, and that is all she wrote. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right? Just us against the world and get it done. <laughs> How happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. O'Donnell, he's on to punt as he gets this one away. Let's go, boys, bring it up. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through and they closed them out with a big time performance down the stretch. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. Till next time, we say so long from the Bayou.